All right, what's going on? This video is sponsored by Shop Carl's. You know, they still have their holiday sale going on at Shop Carl's. They've got 20% off some of the quarterly crates to get you a lot of baits and stuff like that. They've still got their weekend door buster mega savings bundle. And then they also have up to 50% off site-wide for the holiday sale. So really cool. Go over there and check out the Shop Carl's holiday sale. But we're going to talk about our late in the year baits that we throw this time of year. You know, this is a time of year where it's a big transition. You know, August, September, October, even in early November, the fish kind of set up the same way on all the lakes around me. And I use the same kind of baits, four or five baits all the time. You know, throw a frog a lot wacky rig a jig all that type of stuff that i've been saying for a while now i swim jig some but now they are hardcore on bait and we're going to have a lot of shad pattern stuff that we throw this time of year you know like i do throw the rock crawler a ton this time of year also but going to key in today on all in on the bait one that doesn't get very much love at all but i catch a lot of fish on it especially on these spotted bass fisheries they just seem to really, really bite it in that depth range that it runs in. This is the Fat Papa 55, the original. See, that one's got a bill. It's kind of got kind of scuffed up up there. Thrown this one a lot. This color I really like. I think this is the Lavender Shad. This is about the main color that I throw in this thing. The Oliver Shad and then that Olive, the Lavender Shad, and then also that Olive Craw. Two really, really good colors. But this is a really good bait for whenever those fish get in those shallower little cuts on them flat points. There's shallow points close to the ditches, all the baits in. This is a really good bait to throw in that six to nine foot range on 10 pound line. I can get it down to nine or 10 really, really easily actually. But really good bait for that six foot plus range when they're on shad, like I said. And I actually would take this and I see the balls of bait are up there in eight to 10 or 12 foot. I'll just reel this straight through the balls of bait. And a lot of times it's just a little bit louder, a little bit more vibration, stands out from the shad. Those fish that are feeding a lot of times will commit to this, even whenever there's millions of bait around, just because it does have more draw power than the bait does. It gives them something else to key in on whenever those fish are really, really aggressive. So that bait, and also the next one I'm gonna talk about is the Spro Little John. This one has caught fish from in all 50 states, I'm sure. And then also catches them all times of year, but just a really good crankbait for throwing in the fall. It's small, smaller. It's got a wide, it's got a thin body, so it has a really tight wobble. A lot. This bait right here has a relatively wide wobble, not as wide as the rock crawler, but this one has a really thin body. It's a flat sided crankbait, so it has a little bit tighter action. Still creates a lot of thump, still catches a lot of really, really big ones. I know of a 9.8 that was caught on this bait on this exact lake last year, around this time of year, so really good bait for catching big ones. This is just one of those baits you can throw up there in a foot and a half of water, just wind it slow, and then get it all the way down to five or six foot deep, and you can cover a lot of water with it. You can throw it in the tips of trees, everywhere close to those shad. Like, I I'm gonna throw this a little bit shallower when not really on the schools of bait, but on the cover that's the closest to where all the bait is, in the ditches and in the pockets. Everywhere there's bait hanging out, I'm gonna throw this on the shallower cover, really, really close to it. So these two baits right here, I'm actually going to typically throw on about the same setup. I'll usually throw the Fat Papa 55 on a 7 foot 3 cranking rod, and I'll usually throw the Fat pa the Little John on a 7 foot cranking rod just because usually fish a little shallower, make a little bit more accurate cast, and I like that 7 footer for this bait. And I want to throw a little bit further, just you know, heave it out there over those points. So I put this on a 7 foot 3, but, but both of them are on a medium cranking usually i'm actually throwing the 13 fish and fate cranking series rod that's my favorite cranking rod for any of these small little baits but 6.5 to 1 gear ratio reel and it will and then it'll be 6.5 anything in the six range six to one gear ratio reel 10 pound test usually what i'm throwing this on if i'm throwing this bait around a lot of jagged rock and a lot of wood i will throw it on 12 or 14 but for the most part both these baits are going to be on 10 pound sunline shooter i've been throwing sunline sniper recently trying to get some of these baits that are a little bit harder to cast which this bait's really easy to cast, but it's, it's not a super heavy bait, so it's a little bit hard to cast super far. Been using the sniper recently on this, just to try to get a little bit more ease of casting in the wind and stuff like that. So, but for the most part, it's gonna be on the shooter. And then obviously, this time of year, one of the most tried and true techniques for November, December, January, February has got to be jerk bait. This is the Spro Mix Stick. This is actually, as you can tell, the 95. This is the smaller one. That's what I throw a lot of times in the fall. I'll throw the 95 in the fall and I'll throw the 110 or, or the big one in the pre-spawn. I'll throw 
you know, anytime I'm throwing this around shad in the fall, the shad are typically smaller. And then in the spring, it seems like those fish want that bigger profile. So this is a bait that generates a lot of bites. And I'll throw it in the exact same places that I was throwing these other two crankbaits. The only difference is sometimes you can really get them to trigger on a jerk bait. And I've had days before where I'm, I'm cranking and I'm catching nothing but spots, pick up a jerk bait and start catching largemouth, which around my house, that's a really big key is to catch those largemouth consistently. And I've had days before where I can't catch anything on the crankbait and they'll all bite a jerk bait. And then I've had days before where I catch them largemouth cranking and I catch spots on a jerk bait. So they just kind of prefer one or the other sometimes. And whenever it's a little bit tougher, I feel like I can generate some bites throwing the jerk bait so it's a bait that i really like to throw in the fall everybody likes to throw it especially with the prevalence now of forward facing sonar it's a really good way to trigger fish that are kind of sitting there dormant not really that aggressive this bait right here will trigger them a lot of times so the rod i throw that on is a six eight envy it's actually a jerk bait rod it's a medium throw it on 10 pound sunline shooter because a lot of times i can't help it i'll jerk them i'll be jerking and then i'll set the hook real hard or whenever I feel them thump it or I jerk it kind of hard sometimes and then I'll just bust them whenever I'm jerking it. So I want that rod, to, I want that line to be shooter because it holds up to the impact a little bit better. And sometimes I hit them way too hard on a jerk bait and I know I do, but these hooks can handle it and that line can handle it. So I throw a six foot eight jerk bait rod and then a eight to one gear ratio reel. Been throwing the Concept C a lot recently. I know I threw the Inceptions all last year, but recently for this year, I've been throwing the Modus and I've also been throwing the Concept C, so really like those two reels. Just kind of trying stuff out, you know, in, in, during the off season. So that's my three favorite baits for the fall. And also, always, always, always got this dude right here laying on the front deck going into the winter. Don't get a lot of bites on it this time of year, but whenever I do get a bite on it, usually it's going to be one that you're going to weigh in in some of these tournaments. So this is a 3 8 ounce Untamed Tackle Ace, brown one, brown chunk, seven foot three medium heavy rod, and then an eight to one gear ratio reel on 20 pound shooter. So, I mean, that's kind of the bait that I have laying on the front deck all year round, but this time of year is one that I really seem to lean on is that jig. If I can get four or five bites on it on a day, it really seems to help my bag. And then also, like I said earlier in this video, that rock crawler is a sleeper this time of year. It really catches them and it really catches them good. So whenever they're not really on the shed, it seems like they're not really on the shed. They moved to crawfish a little bit later in the year. That rock crawler, I'll pick it up and start catching some really, really good ones on it. So, uh, everything else out here right now, we fish for crappy with. Got a couple crankbaits and a jig. And that's about all you need for November and December, to tell you the truth. Crankbait, jerkbait, and a jig. We'll just about do everything you want to do. Now, if the wind starts blowing, you can throw a spinnerbait, a chatterbait. Those are two really, really good options for fishing in the fall. Caught a lot of really big ones on it. It just seems like time and time again, that cranking bite produces more and bigger fish in the fall. So we're in the late fall, early winter. So that's what I'm be throwing for the next couple of weeks. So if y'all see me on the water, they'll be laying all over the front deck. Appreciate it, guys. We'll see y'all.